And as we mentioned, stress uh, activates the adrenals. But what happens if they have ongoing stress, either physically, like they keep injuring themselves at work, or uh, they had a traumatic injury, like a motor vehicle accident, or they had emotional, psychological stress, like uh, challenging or toxic relationships, or, or uh, financial or, or, or personal issues, right? They might lead to significant increase of cortisol. I really wanted to talk a little bit about the dark side of cortisol. And of course, also talk about, we're going to talk about treatment strategies. So we're going to talk uh, about gut health and cortisol. And this picture gives us kind of a description of the impact of stress on the intestinal barrier and systematic inflammation. So we can see in this picture, we can see the, the gut barrier on top, the tight junction, and we can see on top how there's different, there's multiple species of bacteria, millions and millions and millions of bacteria. There's food antigens, basically proteins that are supposed to be restricted to the gut and, and uh, bacteria and other chemicals in our food and water that are supposed to be eliminated out of the body through the bowel movement. But of course, in situation in which there's dysbiosis, there's intestinal permeability, there's inflammation in the gut, tight junctions open up, and then that leads to intestinal inflammation. So the, the immune cells start to react and then they go into the bloodstream and then they reactivate the uh, HPA axis, the secretion of cortisol. What we can see is stress is also directly can lead to bacterial dysbiosis, intestinal hyperpermeability, and inflammation. Interestingly, all these factors um, are highly connected and regulated, regulating each other. So for example, micro, microbiota dysbiosis can trigger intestinal permeability, as we mentioned, hyperpermeability and intestinal inflammation. And on the other side, intestinal hyper, hyper uh, permeability and inflammation can induce those mic microbial dysbiosis, right? So stress can contribute to inflammation directly through the gut, through inducing changes in the gut bacteria and gut integrity but it can also release, uh, release cortisol. And when we talk about cortisol, it's really important to, to look at some of these in, interesting clinical trials. For example, this animal study reported that chronic physiological stress was associated with a decrease in epithelial tight junction protein uh, levels in the colon and increased colon epithelial permeability. Uh, stress and uh, um, corticosterone injected rats demonstrated a threefold increase in permeability in their colon, but not jejunum. Exposure to stress and gluco, uh, glucocorticoids evoked immediate disruption of the epithelial integrity in the large intestine and increased susceptibility to macromolecules passage and bacteria. And this is what and of course, we elaborate so much more on this in the GI module on how the bacterial transition or, or through the tight junctions, through the gut into the bloodstream causes endotoxemia, contributes to more inflammation. And then that inflammation triggers the adrenal to secrete cortisol. Cortisol disrupts the epithelial integrity, which causes more of those bacteria to migrate into the bloodstream. So you can see how this is kind of like a vicious cycle. It keeps kind of feeding each other. So this is why it's important to understand the mechanism, because if you just look at the lab, the adrenal labs, and you say, oh, I'm going to give you some herbs and we're going to do these changes, but you don't look at their gut properly and they have intestinal hyperpermeability, they have dysbiosis or inflammation, then and you don't address that, they're going to keep just keep flaring up the, the adrenal activation. So really important to remember that that can disconnection. Cortisol can increase permeability by directly impacting intestinal mucosal or promoting tryptophan 
uh, and changing bacterial composition by influencing the intestinal environment. Psychological stress stimulates inflammatory responses and activates immune cells to release cytokines, which can destroy the integrity of the intestinal barrier and blood brain barrier. So we're not just talking about the intestinal barrier. We're also talking here, as we've seen in animal studies, uh, uh, we're talking about the blood brain barrier as well. So this is an interesting, um, interesting way of looking at the gut health and cortisol. This is sort of like the brain, uh, HPA, gut, microbiota axis, which shows us the signaling pathways when there's there's disrupted barrier from the bottom uh, of the picture to the top. There's you can see red. There's like harmful pathogenic increase growth of bacteria. And then there, you can see them sliding, kind of like sliding upwards through the, um, into the body through the gut barrier. The immune cells are just waiting for them, recognize them, initiated a response that, that, um, um, that triggers the secretion of cortisol, the HPA uh, system. And, and of course, a dysfunctional intestinal barrier or leaky gut could lead to, to could con continues to contribute to this pro-inflammatory state and cytokines. And then again, we, met, we mentioned that cortisol, hypersecretion of cortisol can also um, contribute to intestinal hyperpermeability, right? Uh, now, there is one study out of uh, a few studies that we reviewed that showed uh, that showed that cortisol under healthy uh, conditions, healthy st stress response, healthy response to stress, like cortisol in the in healthy levels can help the gut uh, help with gut function by reducing the inflammatory uh, cytokines. But what we're talking about here is the overactivation or chronic activation.